Hello and welcome to the 92nd video in this series of programming a chess engine in C. So in this video we're carrying on from the last video where if you remember we left off that we managed to initialize our book and read in around 90,000 or something entries that are inside performance.bin into our memory allocated and point, uh, to and pointed to by this uh, entries pointer here that was um, a pointer to our polybook entry structure. So what I want to, want to do in this video is make the first steps towards actually reading the information inside there. And this video we're going to write in a couple of functions which we'll be using um, later for the rest of the program, but we'll be changing them a bit. But I just want to at least show some of the information. And we're actually going to print for our, uh, our given position, we're going to print the move to the board. I've made a couple of changes to the code before I go any further, and that is I've added a const in, in here because that was missing. I should have added it in and of course and I've added it in into desktop age, but it doesn't really matter here. You don't need to do that because we're going to remove this function anyway shortly. So at the bottom of um, polybook.c then, the first thing we're going to write is a function called get book move. And really I should actually define the return type of that, so it's a void. It will in the future be an int, but for now it's uh, a void. And here we want to just take in our board, so a pointer to our board like so. And this function is what we call by the engine when it comes to take a move to find if there's a book move available or not, and then select the best one and return that one. But that comes much later. For now, we just want to use this as a lever to read our key. So I'll make um, a poly key. And what we want to do is obviously get the polyglot hash key from our board. So we use the function we've already written here with the board. And what we're going to do then is walk through the entries that we've allocated or that we've read in from the book and find where the key in an entry matches our key. But there are a couple of gotchas with this. So this is why this video is only dedicated to this uh, little bit, which should be relatively simple. So I'll just print the poly key also here to the board with an LL uh, small x. Keep it in hexadecimal and just put poly key. And the last thing I want to do here is now call the function we haven't written yet, and I'll call list book moves, like so, and send in our poly key as an argument. Okay, so that's the first bit done. And before we do anything else, I'm just going to take this get book move definition here with the void, and I'm going to rub over the poly key from board definition, like so. And then inside xboard.c, I'm just going to replace it like so and take out the printf statement here so that when we type poly key it'll um, list us the book moves because we'll be calling get book move. Okay so back to here then we now need to write this list book moves function here. So again avoid and we take in our u64 and we'll just call it we'll call it the poly key. Oops. And the way we're going to do this is in a very similar way that we do with the PV table. We will make a pointer to our block of memory that was allocated inside here that our entries is pointed to. And simply then step forwards for each one of our num entries in the file and see if at that particular entry the key matches our polyglot key. And if it does, we'll then print the move out that's stored at that position. It's very simple, but there's a slight gotcha, which is why, as I already said, the video is dedicated to this. So I'll make an integer called start, which is simply just to keep track of what index we are. And I'll also make our entry pointer and also an unsigned short and our move. So what we're going to do then is simply say that our entry starts by looking at our entries and keeps going until, well, whilst, whilst it's less than our entries plus num entries, like so, and then we'll be incremented one structure at a time. So it should be fairly self-explanatory what's happening in that loop. We're just going through each of the structures, and each time we loop, our entry points to the next structure in the file. And what we'll say then simply here is if polykey is equal to entry key, then do something which is obviously just print the move. And you would think then, and that we would say then, that our move equals entry move, and we can then print here. 
Well, actually, this won't work because the information um, inside this key here isn't quite in the format we want it. And the reason is, is because it's stored in the polyglot book in what's called big endian format rather than little endian format. So just taking in a 16-bit number, if I had a 16-bit number that was, let's just say in the hex, 8, F, and then 3, E, then the E would be the uh, least significant bits here, and our number would be 8, F, 3, E in little endian format. Well, the big endian format of this number would be 3, E, 8, F. And that's how things are stored inside Polyglot. So what we're going to need to add in is three functions to actually swap these blocks of eight bytes around um, so we can read the information correctly. And if you go into Google and just type Little Endian, Big Endian, you'll already find some functions to do this. And I'm simply going to brutally copy and paste these in now because it's not worth typing them out. It's irrelevant to the program. And I suggest that you just download the code and copy them in as well, or you'll find them on Wikipedia anyway. So we've got endian swap for an unsigned sh uh, short, endian swap for an unsigned integer, and also I have next to me here, endian swap also for an unsigned 64-bit key. Now, when I was, I was using, in preparation for this, I wasn't using the polyglot code and I was just using the form, the specification HD Muller site and didn't pick up that it was in this big Endian format and it caused me quite a few minutes of frustration in wondering why the information wasn't being read out quickly but then it dawned on me after looking at the polyglot code so what we actually have to do is convert these things. So the first thing we need to do here for the, the key is we actually need to put our Endian swap U64 around the entry key in like so. And then what we need to do is we need to endian swap u16, our move, to actually get our move. And it's just dawning on me, we probably won't need the u32 one, but it doesn't matter, we'll have it in anyway. So now we've actually got our move properly in the format that we want, which is our little endian uh, mode of storing. Like I said, it's best if you don't understand that, just to go on to uh, Wikipedia and have a look. So now we can actually print the move that we found for our current key. So I can just go to print f. And let's again print the key that was found and we'll be using the Endian swap version here. Just check everything's okay with a small x so we don't need the d. And then we'll just print the uh, index which will be our start. So percentage d. And then finally we'll print the move. And, and here I'm going to really take a shortcut and do this in a bad way. We're just going to do the four characters like this. I'm not going to do any conversions or anything like that because we'll be removing this information anyway. We won't be using this. This is just for demonstration really in this video. So first of all, we'll take this key and we'll use this version here to check everything's okay. And then we want the index, which is start. And now what we want to do is we need our file car and then of the from file, then the, the, the from rank, etc, etc. But we have to think about how the move is stored here. And if I go back into HD Muller's site here, you can see that the first three bits are the to file, the next are the to row, the next the from file, and the next the from row. So bearing that in mind, when we actually do this, our file cart will be our move shifted by six. And I need to put this in brackets, and it tells me it's unmatched. And then we bitwise end this with 7, because each occupies just the three bits. And then I'm just going to do a lazy copy here like this four times, and close this function off. And then we'll have a rank here, and a rank here. And then we shift the two rank by 9, and we shift this one here by 0, and the sorry, the from rank by nine and the two rank is shifted them by three. So that should then, all being well, print our moves out okay. So I'm just gonna save that all out and you can see that I had some problems earlier there when preparing some of the code for this video. Everything compiles and now just run and it's going to export and hopefully everything's going to be working okay. So I'll type new and also force so that we can keep the program um, not making any moves. And now I'll just type poly key. And here you can see that it's found uh, index is remaining zero because I've forgotten to, I'll just quit this, I've forgotten to increment start in the loop and I wanted to show the index. So just at the end of here, I need to increment start 
back into the terminal then and just make this again and run. Okay, so I just run export mode. Can I scroll things down a bit here? No, export mode and then um, new and force and poly key. And here you can see then that the indexes are all adjacent. So the opening book is organized in key order, which means uh, it makes things, particularly with large books, obviously a lot more efficient to search. If you can find where your key starts, then you only have to keep going from there until it's no longer equal to your key to know that you've got all of the moves available for that key inside the opening book. So here you can see we've got E2, E4, D2, D4, and C2, C4, which are obviously opening moves. So if I now just make a user move, and let's make E2, E4, and I'll type poly key again, you can see now that in the book we've got E7, E5, or C7, C5, so let's make user move C7, C5, and type poly key again, and now you can see G1, F3, B1, C3, or C2, C3. So you can be pretty sure there that things are working okay, we're generating our key okay, and we're also reading sensible looking opening book moves out of the book as well. We're obviously not dealing with castling or promotions here, but we'll do that in later videos. Okay then, so I'll just quit out of that and clear the screen a little bit. And that's it then for this video. Uh, we've made a pretty big step. We've managed to read the move information out, which is the biggest thing we need from the opening book. And the next videos we'll get on with actually processing this information properly. So thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.